Thank you, Honorable Member. As many, the Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Central Grand Bahama. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Pleasant good afternoon to you and to parliamentary colleagues and those watching across the length and breadth of the Bahamas. Good afternoon. Special greeting especially to the great people of Central Grand Bahama, who I'm eternally proud to represent in this house. I know my wife and daughters, they're watching to the great community of Waterkey. Um, Madam Speaker, before I get into the crux of my presentation, I would like to, on a more somber note, <coughs> bring condolences to those who are presently going to Soros Valley. I want to offer special condolences to the Russell family, Francine Russell and her family, our sibling on the passing, on the passing of her father and a friend of mine, and a, Mr. Gary Russell, who passed away yesterday. Um, I am sure this must be extremely hard on that family in that they just buried, buried their mother, Hortense Tennessee, last October. So I want to offer special condolences to that family and also to a good friend of mine, Pastor Emeritus Michael Pinder, who, whose wife died suddenly yesterday morning. Michael Pinder's wife died, Stella yes. died Reverend yesterday, yes, yeah, yes, from Upper Zion Baptist Church. She died suddenly yesterday um, in the States. Um, so I've reached out to him, and he has expressed to me that in all his years, he's never experienced so much, so much sorrows. Wow. So I want us to reach out and offer some love and support to Pastor Pinder and the membership at Upper Zion Baptist Church. Madam Speaker, I'm not sure if the member from Marathon was, was peeping my speech. Because my next, my next shout out goes out to all of us who recognize or understand the importance of food security. So special shout out to those persons from the Trees That Feed Foundation, Mike and Mary McLaughlin, and Dr. Ken Banks, uh, who are partnering with us to bring trees to the Bahamas that feeds our people. And in particular, like was noted, the breadfruit tree. And we have quite a bit of breadfruit trees at our farm in Grand Bahama. And I want to say thanks to my sister-in-law, Terrell, uh, Tynes Wilson, who's in Tampa, who introduced me to those wonderful individuals. And I, I also want to say thank you to our local partners uh, and partners and persons like the, sp the spouse of the prime minister, the member from Cat Island, Romki, and San Salvador, who, as was indicated, is very active in that movement. We have other partners like um, Mr. Pericles Millis, Mr. Marvin Pinder, Michael Lytton. We have a crew from Abaco, all actively involved in food security. You know, I want us in the Bahamas to take this matter serious. And let us be more interested in feeding ourselves than our international partners. Madam Speaker, I want to get right into the substantial crux of my presentation on this resolution to constitute a parliamentary committee to monitor the protection and enforcement of human rights in the Bahamas. I indeed echo the words of the United Nations in that human rights are inherent to all human beings, regardless of race, sex, nationality, ethnicity, language, religion, or any other status. Human right includes the right to life and liberty, freedom from slavery and torture, freedom from opinion and expression, the right to work and education, and of course, the right to proper health care. And something I want to note uh, in this parliament, over the last few weeks and months, I've never seen so many appeals going out for blood. Every day on social media, you get six or seven flyers, different persons needing blood. Don't know what's going on in this country, but our blood bank needs to be service. All of our service clubs in this country, including our parliamentarians, I'm not sure people want our blood, but we need to go and service the blood bank. We have the service organizations like Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions Club, and other social, and the churches. We need to pay attention to this matter. And the right to health care, uh, Madam Speaker, I noticed that the member from uh, the member for Tall Pines is not here. 
I want to mention a matter, a health concern that I had. I was in Freeport a few Fridays ago, my wife and I driving home, and we came across an accident. Three cars were involved and quite a number of individuals. At least six persons were lying along the roadside injured. And the ambulance came. Of course, the EMS responded fast. They, their, the service was quick. They were under scene, and they had a difficulty. One ambulance, one stretcher, they had about six or so injured on the ground, and one of the persons that was injured had a broken leg and a, disco, a dislocated uh, ankle, and was sitting up trying to support herself because the airbag had deployed into her chest. And I was there helping as best as I could to support, and you know, God bless the EMS, came there with the bag, and all of a sudden she said, I need life. It was dark, the EMS didn't have any life. Either there was none in the ambulance, or they didn't have it. In Grand Mahama, yes, on a Friday evening. Fortunately, all of us have smartphones. I pulled out my smartphone, turned on the flashlight, and was able to um, illuminate the bag for the, get the medicine out, and others on the scene bought their phones and they, they turned lights on to help with the scene. So whatever equipment we need to ensure that we have proper rights to health care, emergency health care, we need to ensure that those apparatus, those equipment are in place. Now, the speaker, we know that the Bahamas has proudly been a part of several regional and international human rights accords. Our position on these bodies have allowed us, as a country, to play on the big stage, so to speak. We, as a country, understand better than any other how important the rights of our people are and how important it is to ensure those rights are protected at all times. We boast of having one of the best democracies in the free world, with the independence and impartiality of our judiciary, free and fair elections, and of course, the peaceful transfer or transition of power. I believe that the rights of the people of a country truly represents the strength of the democracy. So yes, this resolution is indeed important, and I will repeat that. I believe that the rights of the people of a country truly represents the strength of their democracy. So yes, this resolution is indeed very important. However, Madam Speaker, in the same right, we still have a long, a very long way to go. Madam Speaker, every year, as was indicated by the member from East Grand Bahama. The Bahamas is subjected to a report by the United States Department of States on our human rights practices, along with the other United Nations member states. But Madam Speaker, every year, we are admonished for things like the prison condition, as was indicated, the enforcement of corruption laws. We know there's so much more to do to ensure the protection of the people that live in this country, especially the Bahamians. We recognize that with this resolution, the committee will be empowered to, to assess all matters related to the protection and enforcement of human rights in the Bahamas. And measure the level at which human rights in the Bahamas is consistent with the Bahamas' regional and global obligations and report to Parliament every three months, according to this resolution, with a view of guiding the legislative process. The committee will have to report on the measures designed to improve the quality of life and status of all people, including the most vulnerable and marginalized group. Particularly, Madam Speaker, in the context of climate change, sustainable development, and I want to add food security. This, Madam Speaker, we believe is a noble effort. I want to remind this noble house of another noble effort, or remind this honorable house of another, of another noble effort. Earlier, and I want us all to pay attention to this, I may not like it, but earlier this year, in this session, the official opposition urged this New Day government to take a serious stand on the immigration problem we now face. Madam Speaker, earlier this year, 
the official opposition urged this New Day government to take a serious stand on the immigration problem we now face. The official opposition leader, the member for Marco City, suggested terms of reference to the Select Committee for the Immigration Crisis. But this New Day government voted against it. That's a serious matter. Our leader, along with our team, suggested terms of reference to the Select Committee on Immigration, and we turned it down. We didn't see the urgency there at all. No urgency. But we do recognize that there seems to be urgency in this move. Madam Speaker, I believe it is important to note that while I may not be against the resolution, this country currently has so many other matters that need to be prioritized. I want to pose a few questions to the New Day administration. I understand that governments can sometimes be driven by global consideration. I'm not against it. I'm against the timing of this whole process. Where is our priority? What is really driving this? Every day when we walk into this house, we see the rights of fellow Bahamians, fellow people, tampered with. Where is them not feeling safe or not having the basic support to provide the day-to-day -day needs for themselves and their families? We have so many issues locally. Instead of focusing on these issues, we are debating, you know, like I said last week, Sloop Sailing, Central Bank Act. I once again raise concern to the fact that nothing, and I say it again, substantial in my view, was done in this parliament to highlight the needs and protection of our children during Child Protection Month. Yes, we lay a bill last March sometime, but what do we do during this month? The children are not being protected. They're not given priority. The youth are not empowered. Since my last presentation last week, when I talk about the importance of us getting together and holding hands, looking out, seeking out those who may be lost in the sawgrass of crime, of drugs, of violence, of abuse. A young mother was crying on Monday over the loss of two sons murdered at the same time. We just said, let's hold hands, let's see what we can do to protect our families, to, to prevent the mother from crying out and saying, why didn't we hold hands yesterday? Monday morning, or awoken early Saturday morning to the news that two of our sons were murdered. We need to set goals. We need to devise a plan, and we need to act in unison, and we need to do it now. When will the Bahamian people be the priority of this new government, of this parliament? I don't speak Bahamians are ready for relief. They want more. Our people deserve more. They're looking to us. Our people are relying on us. As always, Madam Speaker, I was asked by the member for West Grand Bahama about my timing, and I told him I'll be my regular under 15 minutes. And I stick to that, I'm a man to my word. As always, we want this administration to do well, because governments are continuous. The official opposition is always here to provide bipartisan support for this New Day government. And I'm continually honored and grateful for this responsibility to be a representative for the great people of Central Grand Bahama. And I will continue, I will continue to do my part to advance our country towards continued progressive development. Madam Speaker, colleagues, Central Grand Bahama stands in support of this resolution. Thank you, Honorable Member.